to my channel. It's a new year, a new video, and I'm actually in a new part of Costa Rica. So I'm currently in Manuel Antonio, which is on the Pacific coast. And for about a month now, I've been working in sloth conservation, which I've been absolutely loving. And in this video, I will be talking about leaves because part of conservation that's really important is making sure animals get a healthy diet because this helps to facilitate a smooth release back into the wild where they're meant to be. So although sloths are not the prime focus of this video, they are the reason why I'm making it. Because thanks to them, I've learned a lot about the different diets of herbivores here, and also how some of these amazing plants are helping to nourish a whole ecosystem. Because obviously, in one of the most biodiverse places in the world, you have a lot of animals. So yeah, I hope you find the video interesting, and let's go! Number one is the Guarumo. Guarumo, also known as Cecropia, has a distinctive leaf shape, and this plant is always found growing in the sun. Three-toed sloths love Guarumos, and you can often find them feeding on the youngest leaves, fruits, and male anthers of the plant. However, something that you might not know about the Guarumo is that it also has a symbiotic relationship with the Azteca ant, or Hormiga Azteca. These ants are aggressive and live inside the hollow trunk, so the plant benefits from the protection against most herbivores. There are several species of Cecropia, but a common characteristic is their white ringed trunk and umbrella-like group of leaves at the tip. Number two is the cacao tree. As you might well know, this beautiful tree has many agricultural uses, especially in the production of chocolate. It has small white flowers and produces a hard yellow fruit, but the sweet white pulp around the seeds can be eaten fresh. Furthermore, the bean itself can be dried and roasted before the later stages of the chocolate making process. Sloths enjoy eating the leaves of the cacao plant and these are elongated with a pointed end. Depending on the age of the leaf, they can vary in colour from green to light reddish brown. Number three is the ficus. Like Cecropia, this is a plant which has several different subspecies. It's more commonly known as a fig tree, but ficus can be identified by their aerial strangler roots since they are sometimes epiphytic and teardrop shaped green leaves. Both two-fingered and three-fingered sloths eat this plant, making it an important food source to sloths as well as many other animals, including birds and monkeys. If you ever cut a branch from this tree, you'll be able to tell it's a ficus because you'll see the latex dripping out of the cut. This is a sticky white liquid which exudes from the broken bark, and its purpose is to seal the plant after injury. Sloths sometimes feed on the ripe fruits of the tree as well as its leaves, and the fruits can also be used for medicinal purposes. Number four is the Inga. Inga is prolific in several countries of South America, and the many plant species of this family can be identified by their even pinnate compound leaves. You can usually spot round glands on the rachis, or stem, between each pair of leaflets, and these look a little bit like a tiny button. Two-fingered and three-fingered sloths both enjoy eating Inga, but almost always the youngest leaves and flat oblong fruits. A final fact, did you know that the Inga is also called the ice cream bean in some parts of Latin America? And this is because the pulp of the seed pod has a smooth texture and a sweet taste. Number five is the beech almond. This hardy sun-loving plant is one of the most important food sources for the two-fingered sloth, and it can be found in beaches, parks, and yards throughout the tropics. Its large elliptical leaves grow in palm clusters, and the most tender red leaves lie at the centre. These are what the sloths eat, but you can often find scarlet macaws feeding on the fruits. So as you can see, this is another plant which feeds many different animals. Number six is the mango. This is a favourite for two-fingered sloths, and they prefer to eat the youngest, glossiest leaves. Once they become older and less brilliant, the mango leaves take on a slightly darker green colour. But what most people know mango for is its fruit. This fruit comes into season between March and June in Costa Rica, and it has a tangy sweet taste. And although the plant is not native to here, it is regularly cultivated in Costa Rica. You can look out for its dramatic height and clusters of white flowers at the end of the branches. Number seven is the water apple. And as the name suggests, the fruit of this tree is sweet and juicy. It can be enjoyed by humans as well as two-fingered sloths. The apples in question are red and pear-shaped, but its leaves are also fairly distinctive. The grown opposite pears are dark green, glossy, and slightly curved. An excess of water apple would be too sugary to form a regular part of a sloth's diet, but in the wild they still eat the fruit from time to time. Number eight is the cinnamon. This is an evergreen plant which most people know for its culinary uses, but it can also be used in medicine. 
The cinnamon aroma is present when the leaves and branches are broken and the plant yields white flowers and purple black fruits when mature. Both two-fingered and three-fingered sloths feed on the cinnamon tree, but primarily the youngest red leaves. Number nine is the saber. This is a deciduous tree mostly found on the Pacific side of Costa Rica and it has a wide rounded crown of drooping leaves. Three-fingered sloths like to eat the light green leaves at the top and you can identify a saber because they have bright green lines running down the side of the stem. The flowers are cream coloured but the fruits are pods of a cottony filament inside and this filament can actually be used for insulation or even to fill mattresses and pillows. Finally, the last plant, number 10, is the guasimo. This tree is originally native to Mexico and can be identified by its heart-shaped tooth leaves. Their fruits look like a green raspberry when they're unripe and these guasimo berries are exactly what sloths love to eat. So there we have it. There are many more plants out there but I hope you found this brief introduction to some Costa Rican botany interesting and I hope you'll stay watching for more slightly sloth related videos in future. Have a wonderful start to new year and see you again soon.